Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and welcome to Chasing Legends. Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle. Welcome back. Please hit the subscribe, hit the notifications bell, leave a comment if you'd like, pick up one of our t-shirts. A little late for Christmas to get them on order and get them shipped in, but you can always use that gift card you got at Christmas to order them up on represent.com. Check in the about information section of uh, our YouTube channel and you'll see it has the link there to kind of take you off. So this week, first off, Merry Christmas because we're coming down to the end of the year. Only a couple episodes left before we get into the new year. Um, wishing the best for our two of our buddies, uh, Woody Wampler and Rick Gwynn. Both of them had a little bit of a scare, health scare here recently, but they seem to be on the mend and doing better. Uh, Rick wanted me to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, so a Merry Christmas to Woody and and uh, Rick and hope everything's well and they're doing well and they recover quickly and the new year brings better things and a lot more gold. So this week I want to do something. We did the one on the rare books, hard to find books. But I wanted to do something on, you know, people are always asking what books should I get? And I wanted to do something, cover books that are kind of basically available. So you're going to be able to go out, you can go on Amazon, everybody's going to get those gift cards, right? You're going to get the gift cards and stuff. What do I do? What do I do? You can go on Amazon or someplace and order these books. So I wanted to run through those, give people an overview and to kind of explain. Um, the caveat here always is, remember most authors write, they got an opinion and a number of these authors are treasure hunters, Dutch hunters. So you got a lot of opinion and speculation in the book and I'll kind of cover a bit about that of why it causes a bit of a problem because from book to book the story can vary because of the person's own personal opinion or speculation. We're going to kick off with one. I think it's probably the one. It's a little more difficult to find, but if you can find it, Mystery Gold of the Superstitions by Robert Garman. And it's a really cool little book. Um, Bob Garman was hunting in the superstitions for the Lost Dutchman Mine part-time. He kind of like stopped doing that and started looking more for silver mines and other stuff in the Eastern superstitions. But he was good friends with Herman Petrash. And because of this, um, he basically did searches. You can kind of, he even has a map showing you the general area they were searching for Herman in. As he took direction from Herman, went to the areas Herman wanted them to search in. Um, it, it's an interesting book. Um, Bob Garman also ended up hooking up a bit with the Tumlinsons and the stone maps and all that. Um, there's a lot of interview material and other stuff, and I know Garman was working, had a manuscript for another book. But this book is kind of a nice because he has a bit of personal information. It's very similar to what Ralph Papps did in his manuscript, which is in the Library of Congress, but was never published for the public. So um, kind of a nice little book. Covers a bit of the Dutchman story from his perspective, Herman's perspective towards the end of his days, which can always be different after you've been searching for something 40 or 50 years. Your stories kind of blend with other stories. But it's a nice little book, a nice little book put together by Bob Garman. Has some nice pictures and stuff and nice information. Um, I always recommend it. If you can find it, that's a good one to pick up. It's not a big, thick book. Next book is where we get into a bit different territory. Good, my good friend Jack San Felice wrote this, and uh, all of these are inscribed generally. But um, Jack wrote a number of different books. I always prefer have a preference for Silver King when Silver was King, um, but it's not necessarily a Lost Dutchman book, superstition book, which is kind of where I want to stick today. Um, this is The Lost El Dorado of Jacob Waltz. I think it's one of his most recent publications. It's a really nice book. I think it encompasses a lot of the material he's written in other books and um, on other pieces he's released. So I think it's a really, really nice, well-done book. has lots of pictures. Um, I'm even in here somewhere. Oh, there I am. Me and Frank are there at the end. So there you go. And, you know, but um, really well put together book. I believe this is available on Amazon. There's always a way to find it. I know Jack has plenty of these when he does speak engagements. He sells copies as well. He's more than happy to sign them. But um, a really nice book gives you a really good overview of a lot of the legends and stuff like that. So uh, I would say if you see a copy of that. Here's one of the two that is kind of probably a little harder to find. And this is, of course, Sims Ely's Lost Dutchman Mine, one of the earliest works. Um, 
I know it's a bit, don't, don't ever pay more than 50 bucks for this book. There were so many of them out there, you will find one. But it, it's really nice to get your hands on it and hear about the early work. A lot of it was taken from the Bark Notes, which wouldn't be included here because it's not a published work. So um, The Lost Dutchman Mind, Sims Ely, I know it's kind of on the rare book list, but it's also, to me, part of that canon. If you're going to say the top 10 books you really should own right now, um, this, this falls into there. So... Um, a lot of these books are kind of sort of updates from other books that sometimes the authors have read. That book still kind of holds true. I think it was published in 1954, so if you get a chance of that. Here's another one. It's a nice book. It covers a lot of ground. It covers some things recently said. Again, um, yeah, signed again, but uh, Jesse James Feldman's Jacob's Trail. Um, I kind of include this. I liked the book. Jesse tried to cover it and do some things a bit different. It also, um, anyone that watched the recent Beyond Oak Island and stuff caught in um, some of the hints of the Cox notes. I know he includes some of that stuff in here. The Dig at Rogers Trough. He does a little bit of um, a who's who in Dutch hunting kind of early in the book, which is really nice. And then he covers different parts of the legends and from the Cox notes and stuff. So it's really nicely done. I know he's looking to put another one out, but I believe this is still on Amazon. And um, Jacob's Trail. So always, always kind of put the bump out. I, I liked the covered art, art too. I know there's a painting somewhere. I can't remember who did the painting, but I'm not going to look right now. But Jesse Feldman, um, really nice book. Um, good job, Jesse. He's had it a number of years, and he wants to revise it. But if you, if you see a copy out there, grab that. Now this one will cause everyone will have a little bit of a problem because they'll be thinking I should be talking about this book, which um, no longer is out there, got pulled, um, The Bible of the Lost Dutchman Mine. My general problem with it was there was a lot of information that was passed along and stuff, and it's kind of had some discrepancies and stuff. But this book came out earlier, The Curse of the Dutchman's Gold. It is the smaller version of the Bible. Um, and it's very, very good. I like it very much because Helen Corbin, what she did in this book really, really well was she didn't try to be throw a lot of opinion and speculation in this book. Now, it doesn't include the other stuff of the bark notes and certain other things, but she tried to present evidence and talk about a number of different things and the possibilities. Um, I thought it was really well written. It was a really good book. Um, it kind of got me back in to kind of really getting into this sort of thing. Um, I believe this one's signed too. Yeah, signed too, see? But um, yeah, it's really, really, really nice book. If you see this book, and this book did pretty well. It's out there on bookshelves. I don't think you can still find it um, new. But if you do see a copy sitting on a bookshelf somewhere, grab it up. I got a number of copies, and I always try to hand this one out to people that really get into Dutch hunting occasionally. It doesn't hold together very well um, on the binding and stuff and so forth. But for a good, nice overview and a nice read, this is an excellent book. Um, the next one, still pretty generally easy to find. It's out there in paperback and hardback, and you get a copy. I personally like it. It was one of my first ones, The Killer Mountains by Kurt Gentry. It's about Glenn McGill and his dig. It's basically one of the few books here where it's an author speaking of someone else's experience and kind of doing the investigation report on that stuff. Um, it's such a good book. Um, it, it, it's a good adventure story. has pictures, a lot of the Walt stuff and information that he still was working on then. Um, they seem to kind of like go through that and just put out the really good stuff. Um, it's a nice book. You'll get a really good understanding. He kind of, there's a little bit of a history of the deaths and the superstition passages before they go in the mountains and stuff. But they do a really nice job of um, covering a lot of ground. This, of course, is the hardback. There is a soft um, cover um, paperback that's white. I think it has the skull and stuff on it, too. But um, excellent book. If you find this out there, grab that up. It's always good to have one around. Now, the next book originally came out like this. And um, Hiker's Guide to the Superstition Wilderness by Jack Carlson and Elizabeth Stewart. It's probably the easiest book here to find. You'll find it on Amazon. You may find it in most any used bookstores. You will find it in Barnes & Noble on the bookshelves and hiking or Arizona sections and stuff. And this was the original Hiker's Guide to the Superstition Wilderness, covered everything. And I would always tell people for years, this is the one book. No matter what you're getting of these, grab this book. But everything changed because Jack and Elizabeth, who are awesome people, decided to do a Trails West and a Trails East book. So you get probably more than twice the information. Um, they cover the hiking, 
but they cover the history. And these books are special because of one thing. It's so important. There's no speculation, opinion. There's no, Jack's not a treasure, treasure hunter. Elizabeth's not. They're really nice people. I've been in the mountains with Jack. I, I've gotten to sit around and talk with Elizabeth, but I've been on many hikes with Jack. And um, really, really good people. But he put in, you, you get GPS coordinates, you get the maps, you get to see where generally stuff is. Um, they tell the stories, but they don't try to tell the stories as this is, you know, absolute positive truth or this or that. Um, it covers the ranching, it covers the, you know, the Dutch hunters, all the general history you could want. If you want to know about the Superstition Mountains and the Lost Dutchman Mine, and you don't care about little tangent stuff like the um, stone maps and that kind of stuff, except for just kind of cursory information, this is it. Because this is going to tell you where someone dug up the stone map. This is going to tell you where this is. This is going to tell These books are a great travelogue for the entirety of the mountains. And um, for many years, I kept this book in my backpack just to reference read and always do stuff I've been out there with Jack when he was revising these and I don't know how many more editions they will continue to revise but it was so awesome he'd be going along noting places capturing things photographs um, different things taking notes as he's hiking with us um, Jack Carlson and Elizabeth Stewart really really awesome people of course these are side two I think they gave me these books I think these were gifts to me for um, doing a number of different things. But two wonderful people. And if there are two books I would recommend anyone to even start with. You start with these, it makes everything else. You kind of understand. This, this, this is the meat and potatoes. This is going to be just pretty much cover it. You're not going to find any speculation, opinion, any blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next book is important because it originally came out. I don't have the cover on this one. But it came out. And it had notes of authenticity in the back. The book is called Thunder God's Gold. Um, it's probably more popularized, but when Barry Storm wrote it, that um, movie group came from Holly Weird, as usual, and they decided to make a movie called Lust for Gold with Glenn Ford. I think it's got a different name. Um, what is it called? Bonanza. It's called Bonanza. Um, was another title used for that film, but it's generally known as Lust for Gold. And Barry, they took Barry Storm's story and they were going to make a movie. And Barry Storm was involved in helping them get the financing and very involved in this picture. Um, John Clemenson, his name. And um, unfortunately, Barry ended up trying to sue them because they portrayed him as Jacob Waltz's grandson. And most everything about the film was fictitious. But they went to the governor and the governor was happy to have them filming. And they said, hey, can you do a thing about the superstition about Lost Dutchman Mine is a very real thing. And he ended up basically saying, well, the movie's a real thing. Tom Collinbord did an excellent article about the whole fiasco. Um, Barry really didn't want to support the film after that. They, I think they settled finally uh, somehow. But the rest of his life he was writing revisions of this and would argue the fact that they just basically took everything apart. What's very nice is if you're in Goldfield Ghost Town and once in a while you'll look around, you'll find this little copy, Thunder God's Gold by Barry Storm. Um, Bob Shoes has made sure this is reprinted. It has a little section at the end, a little epilogue that he included differently. It does not have the notes of authenticity, but it has pretty much everything else in the book that was in the original. Um, it's written in the vernacular of the time, which means it's a bit odd. It's kind of like some serial TV show write-up. It's kind of odd, but if you get by that part of it, it's an interesting book because Barry Storm did hunt in the mountains. Um, there's another writer, if you're ever in the museum or someplace, you'll see a little pamphlet, um, Lost Mines and Monuments, by a gentleman named John Burbridge, who did work with Barry Storm in the mountains and then broke off on his own thing. Burbridge was probably the better treasure hunter of the two. Barry Storm was more popular. Unfortunately, Barry Storm's first book, which is really difficult to find, and I put it in the rare books part, that book is probably the better book of the two. He had someone help write it, and um, Barry Goldwater helped him with that, and the financing and so forth, and it was a really well-written book. A little more historically accurate, but this is Barry Storm's Thunder God's Gold. I think if you're reading Sims Ely and all these other books, it's good to have the basis of how it all kind of started, and he was back in there in the 30s, so it's one of these early Dutch hunters that started writing. This next book, there was a book called The Golden Dream, and it's very hard to come by. 
and there are certain things that may be outdated in it and I think almost everything in it is included in here and with changes and a number of added things is by our friend Thomas Glover. Um, this Treasure Tales of the Superstition clues, maps, and twice told tales. He added different sections. He expanded a lot of what was in Golden Dream, a lot of the sections. He actually kind of updated and expanded. So you get the same thing that was in Golden Dream and then he expands upon it. Um, very, very nicely book. He's very meticulous. If you're looking for the guy that will do the footnotes, cover the footnotes, and every little thing, every question you could ask when you read a sentence, it's probably going to be answered somewhere else in the book. He did a really, really nice job on this. I don't think it gets the love that it should. I remember when he was showing me the um, cover photos and asking me what cover photos I thought. So, again, they're always signed, but... Um, I, I think Thomas did a wonderful job. I would only hope, and I don't think he watches my videos, but Thomas, if you do, um, I would hope the number of lectures he give on um, Jacob Waltz's um, land ownership in Phoenix, and then there's his mining claims and so forth. Um, he does lectures. It would be great to see a transcript of those put in published form because sometimes when he's talking and in his process of thought, he does such a wonderful job of doing that. And it would be great to see some of those stories in their entirety. But again, this is a great thing. It covers John Cochere, it covers the Tussauds, it covers everything you could want. And then again, um, Golden Dream, he was a bit different. He covered and kind of made it coordinate with Jack and Elizabeth's books, where some of the stuff in their books, there was um, a reference to their books. So if you wanted to find something referenced in his book, you could have their book and, and find it. Um, I don't believe that's really in this book. It's not quite the same. But it does include a number of things, and things that we've talked about, like the Cave of Bronze, um, the Cave of the Bronze Cross, and a number of things. But um, definitely an excellent writer. He, the man has a PhD. Let's give him credit. He actually can actually spell and put perfect sentences together, which is just a little more difficult for the rest of us. We we didn't pay attention back then. But um, Treasure Tales of the Superstitions, excellent book. Um, pick it up. It's out there. I know that's available. The next two are kind of special, they have their special places, um, and I wanted to cover them. They're, one of them, both of them could be a little more difficult to find, but they are by a good friend of ours. This one is Superstition Mountain, A Ride Through Time by Thomas Columborn. Um, I really liked Tom's books. Tom's books are signed, but um, Tom's books were written from a lot of the stories in this or from perspectives of his own time in the mountains. And they're written by him and Jim Swanson. I think Jim's name's on here too, but it's Tom's book, let's face it. But um, it's written from the perspective of Tom's time in the mountains. So it's about his meetings with people, his time in the mountains. It talks about when he worked for the Barclays and the Quarter Circle U Ranch and a number of different people he met. Um, you know, just various prospectors and people. Um, it doesn't cover everything in his life. I wish he would have done another volume more personal. I would have loved to hear more stories or him make public the story so we could always discuss them. Of his father's relationships with a number of these people. But people forget Tom met so many people we can speak of like Herman Petrash, Abe Reed. He knew these people and, and, and it's completely different than someone saying, I met Herman Petrash once and shook his hand. Um, Tom actually knew these people. His um, father used to take pies and, and go visit Herman and had been partners with Herman in the 40s, 30s and 40s, had partnered up with him. So excellent book, um, just to kind of take a little bit out of it, some of the chapters of what it covers, because if you do see a copy of this book, grab it off the sh shelf. Um, he talks about, you know, Adolph Ruth, um, Jabez Clapp, Ed Piper, Celeste Jones in The Feud, Dr. Ralph Palmer, Brownie Holmes, The Ailers. Um, he talks about Revis. Um, it, it just covers so much. Nice photographs, excellent, excellent, well-written book. And for years, this is the book we had. But Tom did come out with a second volume. And it's called Superstition Mountain in the Footsteps of the Dutchman, which is, I call it, Riding Time Part 2. And it's a very similar book. It's written about other things. Um, and, and it's about these other stories that you're going to see what I talk about and other people talk about. And it's from Tom's personal collection. Um, I really like the way that Tom wrote because he wasn't much one for putting in the over drama about stuff. I, I know Tom didn't believe that Adolf Ruth had um, been killed. I don't know what this is. Uh, hmm. It's a bit of a note. It's from Slim Fogel about... Oh, Reezer. Hmm. 
Okay, it's a receipt in 1965 from Al Reeser for packing fees. I don't know. Who knows where that came from? Patchy Junction Stables. And it's a it's an old receipt from the 60s. I have odd things in my books that I use as bookmarks. See, there's historical collectibles as my bookmarks in my books. Anyways, excellent book. If you see this book, and I believe it'll still possibly be on Amazon, I'm hoping so. I know, um, I'm hoping they will continue to publish Tom's works because in between these, there is the chronology of the Superstition Mountains, which is an excellent book, the Circle Stone book, um, the Legends of the Superstition Mountains pamphlet. Um, Tom wrote some excellent, excellent works, and I would hope they continue to uh, make their way out there because I consider them at the top. Cream of the crop for his storytelling and his accuracy on history. So there's so many other books. We could sit here for another hour and a half as I went through the bookshelves behind me. Um, covering more and more and more stuff. And it's not that I don't like other books. I thought, if someone wanted to get a book, you're not going to be disappointed with these books. And we'll do another one here, maybe sometime in the future. I'll just separate and break down some other books and cover some of the other stuff I like. I think I covered not only these, but some of the other books by the authors, if you see them. Um, definitely pick them up. I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody has a great holiday season right now. Everybody's staying healthy and everything. We're getting back in the mountains and getting our stuff done and our time done. Like I said, Rick, um, said, Rick Gwynn said Merry Christmas. Woody Wampler and Rick Gwynn, hope you guys get healthy. Me and Frank will be out there, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody out there when we get a chance because the weather is perfect now for the mountains. So I'll be stretching my legs and getting out there and get myself in a little better shape up there, okay? And we will try to pull some Chasing Legends out of the mountains for footage. We won't be using for the Legend of the Superstition Mountains stuff. Um, those episodes will come up as we kind of enter into the year. So look forward to those. We're trying to, only thing I will say is we're trying to make sure those are perfect. Um, COVID and a lot of other things that happened restricted us and put us in a lot of positions. My thing was, regardless of how we felt about moving forward with those type of episodes, I wanted to make sure these were the best ones. That when you watch them, you're not only getting fully informed, all your questions are answered, and you're sitting there and going, my gosh, it's going to be a story of stories. And I think people are gonna, I'm looking at probably there'll be 12 episodes. I think everyone's gonna sit back and kind of sit back and think, man, that's pretty damn cool and very interesting and we want to play it out kind of real time as much as we can but we wanted to make sure we had the right footage and we took our time with it and we did and there were things that interfered to some degree but we're going to be working and finishing it up we want to release it when the 12 episodes are done not an episode so many episodes take a break if we're not finished so those will be coming we will continue with chasing legends till the next time next week when we say goodbye to this year because 2020 could bite me at this point Thank you for watching. Have a good Christmas. Have happy holidays. We will see you again later on Chasing Legends of the Superstition Mountains.